Hi, this is Pastor Daryl Myatt coming to you from the Wichita Mountains in Oklahoma. Today is Wednesday, June 8th, 2022. This channel is all about world news, Bible prophecy, end time events, and the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I have to say that, um, yes, I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor, I'm a servant of Christ. I may not look like your image of a preacher or what he should be. I, I'm not typically in a three-piece suit. Uh, I try not to wear a tie if I can help it, um, but I am a servant. I'm here to serve. I just want you to know that. Uh, also, if you wouldn't mind, <laughs> I could use some prayer. My wife and I are looking to move again in a week, so that'll be twice in about a six-month period. And, uh, I mean, after living in our house in Texas for some 25 years, it's getting a little overwhelming. Um, anyway, it's going where God needs us. We're, we're staying here in the mountains in Oklahoma, just somewhere different. <sighs> Fun. Anyway, out of Israel today, headline says, Iran will go nuclear, laments IAEA chief. With no time to say, I told you so, Israel prepares for action and warns that all options are on the table. The International Atomic Energy Agency chief says Iran is going nuclear. You think Israel's going to let that happen? It, it's like the whole world is just kind of standing there going, okay, Iran's going nuclear. What are you going to do, Israel? Everyone knows Israel is the only one that can really do anything to them, and they will. And I believe we're going to see Israel strike Iran's nuclear facilities here in the next few months. And then Iran will get the sympathy of the world and will launch a world army against Israel, just like Ezekiel 38 tells us will happen. It's coming. We're watching it develop. It's here. Out of World Israel News, dead or alive, Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas absent from key event. This event was to prove that he was alive. Palestinians on social media are demanding the Palestinian Authority president hold a picture of today's newspaper in order to prove he's still alive. Is he? I don't know. I don't know, talking about him being in poor health and um, somehow they they don't think he's alive. Who knows? I guess we'll find out soon. Um, in other news, speaking of Mahmoud Abbas, out of JNS, Palestinian advisor to Abbas says Jews are not connected to the land and the occupation to soon disappear. Really? Jews not connected to the land of Israel? Are you just stupid? It's amazing to me how many people will deny history. They'll deny truth to suit their own agenda. Senior advisor to the Palestinian Authority leader Mahmoud Abbas claimed that the land of Israel belonged to the Palestinians since before the Natufians, the Canaanites, and the Jebusites Hmm. He said, just like the Greeks, the Romans, the Persians, and the Crusaders, Israeli oversight would come to an end. He said, this occupation will also disappear while Jerusalem will remain. Hey, guess what? Sorry. God is clear that he will protect his land, his people, Israel. This guy in the Palestinian Authority said, the land belonged to us even before the Canaanites and the Jebusites. And it says it belonged to us today and it will belong to us tomorrow until Allah will inherit the earth and all beings thereon. Let me tell you something. Allah is not God. Allah is the devil. And he's not going to inherit the earth. He's the God of this world already, but he's about to be thrown into a pit and sealed up for a thousand years when Christ reigns on earth. You see, in Islam... Allah has no son. It's blasphemy to say that Allah has a son. So many people like to say that we worship the same God. We clearly do not. 
because my God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, sent his son Jesus to die on a cross so that we might have everlasting life for all who believe upon him. For all who accept his sacrifice on the cross is the only thing needed for their salvation. My God sent his son. Every Muslim on the planet will tell you Allah has no son. Their God has no son. They'll say Jesus is not the son of God. They'll say Jesus did not die on a cross. And they'll say Jesus did not rise again from the dead. Liars from the pits of hell. You see, Muhammad was tricked by the devil himself in that dark cave. Muhammad thought he was talking to the angel Gabriel, but it was the devil in disguise. Because God himself wouldn't bring a false gospel. He wouldn't bring another gospel. There's a reason why the Bible tells us that the devil can disguise himself as an angel of light. There's a reason why Paul said, if we or an angel from heaven come to you with any other gospel other than this gospel about Christ, may they be forever accursed. There's a reason that Jesus Christ himself in John 3, 18 said, if you don't believe in the only begotten Son of God, you are condemned already. Condemned. So Muslims, by their denial of Christ, condemn themselves to hell. Yeah, I'm sorry, Allah is not inheriting anything but the pits of fire. Only Jesus can save you. Allah is a liar. Yeah, I said that. Allah is a liar. Muhammad was a liar. He was an illiterate fool who couldn't even read. Was never in Jerusalem. Jerusalem's not mentioned in the Quran even once. You see, they've mistakenly interpreted this phrase, the farthest northern mosque, as to thinking it was the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount in, in Jerusalem. Problem is, that mosque didn't exist on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem until over 50 years after the death of Muhammad. Do your research. Only Christ can save you. He loves you so much that he laid down his life that you might have everlasting life. Islam will not save you. It will only lead you to the pits of hell. The Pope can't save you. The Roman Catholic Church can't save you. The Baptist Church can't save you. The Mormon Church can't save you. Scientology can't save you. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can save you. Let's make sure that's absolutely clear. Out of the Times of Israel, UN Pro blames Israel for perpetuating conflict with the Palestinians. So the UN is blaming Israel for the conflict with the Palestinians, basically saying, because you exist and you're in this land, that's the problem. Hmm. Hmm. Understand something here. The Jews were in that land over 700 years, actually. It was uh, late in the 6th century after Christ's death that Islam even became a, a thing. So some 2,000 years prior to Islam even coming around, the Jews were already in the land. So do your history. Do your research. Out of the Daily Caller, Democrats straight up admit the J6 hearings are political theater. Political theater. They're trying everything they possibly can to distract you from the fact that they have done the worst job in American history of running this country. Gas prices more than tripled. Inflation's gone up. You can't find baby formula. There's famines. There's shortages. Nothing is affordable. The Democrats want to take your mind off that, and they want to do this political theater of trying to blame Trump couple of years ago, two and a half years ago on January 6th, that he was trying to cause some kind of uproar. I've, I've watched the video. He's not calling for any violence, which amazes me because I've seen the uh, Mayor Lightfoot out of Chicago actually saying to people, it's time to take up arms and come against this thing and fight in the streets. She's calling for violence. And yet, somehow that's okay. But Trump saying to be patriotic and American, somehow that's 
worthy of prison time. I can't wait till tr Christ returns and he sets all these things straight when all the lies will be burned up and the truth will be made known. I can't wait. Looking forward to that day. We need to trust God even when bad things happen. In 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12 it says, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I also am known. And now abides faith, hope, and charity, or love. These three, but the greatest of these is charity, or love. Another definition for charity is love. You know, all throughout history, there's been a lot of times when, when people have said, I don't even know why this is happening in my life. Why is this happening? Job, in the Bible, one of the oldest books in the Bible, Job was going, why is this happening to me? And his wife was like, just curse God and die. There's going to be countless times when we never know why certain things are happening, at least not on this side of heaven. I think one day we'll know all the answers. We'll understand why everything happened. Um, now you could ask God to help you understand, you know, um... Scripture says if any of us want to know the wisdom of God, we can ask him. And in his wisdom, God will either answer you or he won't. But when we're facing a tragedy or difficulty or a sorrow, we don't need answers. What we really need is God. We need his hand. We need his strength. We need his wisdom, his guidance. When there seems to be no way out, God says, I've got the way. He makes a way when there seems to be no way. It doesn't make sense to you now, maybe, but that doesn't mean it won't later. God knows, and will make sense of it. We we just don't have the right perspective at this time. We're not looking at it through the right eyes. But one day, we're going to be like, ah, okay, now I get it. Now I see. So when you don't know why things have happened like they have, keep your focus on Christ. Keep your eyes fixed on Him and do what you know to do. Keep serving God. Keep showing up. Keep being faithful in the church. Faithful in your marriage. Faithful on your job. Keep sharing your faith. And one day, probably on the other side of glory, all these things will become clear and the truth will be made known. But until then, we need to make sure we're avoiding foolish choices. Um, I mean, no believer is immune to sin, right? But we do far better when we slow down and we rely on God's word instead of man's lies. In Proverbs, Proverb, Proverbs 14, verse 12, it says, The wicked desires the net of evil. Wait, wrong one, sorry. Proverbs 14, verse 12. There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter the heart is sorrowful. And the end of that mirth is heaviness. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. The simple believe every word, but the prudent man looks well to his going. A wise man fears and departs from evil, but the fool rages and is confident. He that is soon angry deals foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. You know, most people don't typically set out to sabotage their own future, right? But it can happen anyway because of their ignorance, because of their rebellion, because of their blatant disregard for God and His Word. Now, your whole life could be completely derailed by foolish choices in judgment and the consequences could be disastrous in the future you know as Christians we have God's Word we have his spirit to guard us to guide us to lead us but that doesn't make us immune to poor choices especially in times of weakness you know we're we're more likely to make unwise decisions when we're extremely hungry or angry or lonely or tired uh, this, this acronym of HALT, hungry, angry, lonely, and tired, signal to us it's time to step back, reevaluate our decision process making. You know, impatience, 
and, and strong desires can lead us astray and blind us to the consequences of those bad choices. That's why we have to learn to make decisions by using a, a long-term perspective instead of focusing on what's immediately in front of us. You know, if you look back over your life, you probably see times or choices that were made in times of weakness or impatience that led to negative outcomes, right? Even when a need seems urgent, I think it's best to slow down and carefully consider your steps so you can be satisfied with the course ahead. We need to be careful in this day and age uh, because you know what? God not only loves us, but he likes us. In Mark 5, 19, it says, Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. I mean, one of the ways God's goodness is revealed to us is through his mercy, right? And now we might describe mercy as, you know, the, the, the readiness of God to relieve the misery of fallen creatures. A lot of times mercy is called compassion or loving kindness. It's expressed toward the sinner because of the misery that sin has brought upon the sinner. Now God's mercy to the believer is revealed by his taking away the misery of sin's consequences through the new covenant of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now mercy is not something we earn. It's not something that we merit. But just like the Apostle Paul says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. Our Heavenly Father, He's the originator, He's the author, He's the source of all mercy. Mercy is condescending love, reaching out to meet a need without considering the merit of the person who receives the aid. This is right out of the dictionary. You know, when we were spiritually dead because of our sins, God's forbearance was working on our behalf. He was tolerant toward us. He was patient toward us. He was kind towards us. God abounded in excessive pro proportion with goodwill, with compassion, and a, a desire to help us. He was kind. He was compassionate. He was forgiving in the way he treated us. He wanted an abundant supply to relieve us of our distress and bring relief for our sins. He did this by giving us life in place of death. It was with Christ that this salvation was secured on the cross. By grace, by kindness, by favor, by mercy, we're saved through faith. This was the result of God's extremely large degree of love that he loves us always seeking the welfare of us because God not only loves us but he he likes us too we need to make sure and thank him every day for all the goodness for all the grace for the forgiveness for removing our sins as far as the east is from the west thanking him for showing us the way, for showing us the truth, thanking Jesus for his sacrifice he made on the cross that we might have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Jesus, the only name under heaven by which you must be saved. Trust him today. Because no one else can save you. I love you guys. God bless you. Good Lord willing. I'll see you again tomorrow.